Hi, and welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Martha, on Martha's Vineyard. Uh, if you haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney. Uh, and But this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. You've seen these folks. If you've seen any of my presentations at the, at the Senior Center in, at, in Tisbury, Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's Martha's Vineyard, that means right there. They don't want to go to the mainland. God knows they don't want to go to Nantucket. They don't want to go to the West Coast. They want to stay home. So the question is, who are the people they need to know and what are the programs they need to know about in order to do that? And my co-host, I kind of, some people know me, everybody knows Sandy Cordoby, my co-host, who is this I always say on the mainland, like the greatest geriatric care manager I've ever known, but you just know her as the geriatric care manager in on Martha's Vineyard. So she finds these terrific guests. She had suggested this guest a while ago because she said, people, you know, Frank and Mary need to know about thinking about how they're doing their financial planning um, a lot because their issue is they don't want to run out of money. It's great if the kids get some money, but they don't want to run out of money. So Sandy has got this great guest. Whom do we have today, Sandy? Arthur. That was a big mouthful. Good morning. And today we have Aaron Muldoon. Um, and Aaron and I have known each other for a lot longer than probably either one of us want to admit. Um, <laughs> since we both share really good skin care and don't want to admit. Um, so, um, but we, we had a really fun discussion the other day just getting ready for the show. And, and what became very apparent very quickly is, um, which we knew, is that we're both kind of geeks about helping elders um, figure all this stuff out. And Aaron, I'm gonna let you talk about what your absolute title is at New York Life, but I wanted Aaron to be on the show because Aaron has a, a real talent for helping people figure out how to plan for their future financially um, some of the pitfalls to avoid, and just some really good practice in getting ready to grow older. We're hearing so much now from people that are in their mid-80s and doing really great, but they retired 20 years ago and they're worried about running out of money, and, and Aaron is the one to go to. And um, so I just want us to have a conversation today about some basics of things that people should be thinking about, and, um, and Aaron's my girl for that. So Aaron, if you could just tell us your, I don't want to butcher your title, um, so well, I'll let you introduce yourself. Thank you, Sandy. And thank you, Art, for having me as, as a guest today. Um, I'm Erin Muldoon, and I'm a financial services professional uh, and licensed agent um, where I've partnered with New York Life. Um, it's allowed me to be able to grow a financial services practice um, essentially throughout the country. Um, but particularly here in our community on Martha's Vineyard and in and around uh, the Boston area. Um, my wheelhouse really has developed into um, estate planning issues that have come up for people uh, as well as retirement income planning. Um, so uh, conversations come up and people need help and you know it's such um, a, a complex or an integrated um, process, um, I can help relieve a lot of uh, that stress and being able to, you know, start with a particular point and, and then take it from there. And by the way, you know, I, as I always tell clients, you know, for financial planning advice, don't ask your lawyer, you know, or your accountant to think and think they're going to know all that stuff. I mean, lawyers and accountants approach this from a very specific point of view. You know, I, I, I have concerns about the way things are structured in terms of, can we make sure that later on, if we need to restructure things for nursing home purposes, we can, or there are some questions that I need to be, do we have that? And an accountant is inevitably thinking about taxes, you know, oh, you've got to minimize tax. And those are two important things, you know, but I think we're really just a little piece of what you do. You know, it sounds like yours is much more, it's, it's much more holistic, you know, in terms of what, what you're trying to accomplish, you know. Indeed, um, in, in holistic and integrated sort, sort of go hand in hand. A lot of our clients, um, when they come to us, may or may not already have done some level of planning. You know, we would expect, you know, that. Um, and oftentimes uh, it provides uh, an opportunity for me to be a liaison between them and their 
tax attorney or them and their certified financial planner or them and, you know, their estate planning attorney. So, you know, we bring our, I bring, you know, a particular seat to the table to really put a second set of eyes on uh, the planning that's already been done, not necessarily to undo anything, but um, where I come in is uh, to look at um, what's been done and make any recommendations for, you know, improvements and nine times out of 10, you know, through this liaising with these other uh, professionals, um, we can really button up a tight plan for our clients. And Sandy, you mind if I ask a couple of questions? Because I think this is just, this is really important stuff, right? This, well, not that the questions you ask aren't important, but I, I hear this stuff all the time, you know? Um, can, can you just kind of talk about kind of how people can think about this? Because as you say, everybody, of course, has thought about it a little bit, you know, and they've gotten advice from various players, which typically, you know, out here and back here in the, on the mainland includes, you know, the guys at the Dunkin' Donuts, you know, and the, as well as their account. And, you know, everybody's got their two cents, you know, and, oh, I got this great investment and you ought to try it and blah, blah, blah. But, but so they're kind of the question, and typically they've got some stuff, you know, maybe they have an annuity of some kind, they've got some cash, maybe they've got an IRA that's sitting around, but, but how do they kind of go about thinking about it all, you know, thinking about how they, how they plan for the rest of their lives, you know, as opposed to just worrying about it at night, you know, wake up in the middle of the night, oh my God, how did that work again, you know? Right. That we have uh, clients that have presented themselves, you know, oftentimes that will say, I have no idea where to start, you know, and just like you said, sometimes in the break room or, you know, on a phone call or out on the golf course, people will adopt other folks' plans that they've done naturally because it's, you know, oh, someone I know and trust has doing this, so I'm going to go ahead and do this, when in actuality, it's inconsistent or counterproductive to the goals that they're trying to achieve. So um, really what it comes down to is always making sure to have a conversation um, to make sure that your goals are very clear and that the planning that's been done is is in alignment with that. Um, otherwise, you're you know negating your goals. You're losing money, or you've got exposures that um, you know in the event something could happen, uh, you, you know you you could be into some trouble. That's a real challenge. That's and, and so and when you're starting, so say you're Frank and Mary, you know, and that's, you're Frank and Mary, and you're seventy, and you're both retired now. And you're feeling pretty good, you know, so you're not, you're not, you're not really worried, at least for the time being, about how things are going, right? And, and how, how do you go about fig figuring that stuff out? You know, like for that person that you just described who says, where do I start? So sure. where do you start? And really, this can, um, you know, the conversation that I'm having with you today really can apply for anyone at any age. Um, there might be a few added extra things in there in terms of, you know, longevity of one's funds or, you know, some real um, significant legal documents around, you know, end of life. But, you know, for the most part, there's really, you know, cornerstones to a good financial plan and making sure that you can start off with those protection pieces. You know, when, when you don't come home, uh, to your family one night, you know, what do you need to have happen? Um, or if you get sick or get hurt, how are you going to earn income and how are you going to save? Um, who's going to take care of you? Those kinds of things. Um, and, you know, really making sure that uh, what you've accumulated in terms of assets is safe and liquid or growing the way it needs to or producing income the way that uh, you need to uh, meet your expenses. And, you know, you know, lastly, it really is around the distribution of those retirement funds that you've accumulated over time, you know, is the risk that your investments are in, um, you know, matching up with your risk tolerance? Um, are you getting the right rate of return that you need on your investments to make sure that, you know, you're not going to outlive your portfolio? And, and really what it's all about is tax efficiency. You know, the amount of debt that our country has taken on you know, especially in the last year with changes with the SECURE Act, you know, everything's changing. Our interest rates are low, market volatility is all over the place. So, you know, when it comes down to looking at a plan, 
you really need to pull out those statements and look at those documents to see how am I doing? And it's always worthy to ask the question, is my plan doing exactly what it's intended to do? And one of the real challenges is to, I talked to so many folks, <clears throat> they know they, they're so worried about that market volatility that they just want to hide it under the mattress, you know, or, 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 which is, or, or put it in the bank in a CD, which is the equivalent of hiding it under the mattress, you know. Oh yeah, you're, you're losing same, money at that you're point. About the same interest rate, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that you get under the mattress, and and you you know you, you and and so how do how do people? And I know that's an issue of risk tolerance, you know. But so how do how do you how do people deal with from your experience that balance between I just don't want anything, I can't afford to lose anything, you know. But right. at the same time, if I can't afford to, if I don't lose anything, I'm not going to make any money and I'm going to run out of money before I die because I'm not going to have any, you know, there's not going to be enough money. H how, do, how do people deal with that? Um, so having a conversation really about, you know, what does retirement look like for you? What are your expenses going to be? You know, what are your fixed costs going to be? And, and really having a clear sense about what your budget is and, you know, how you're going to live month to month. And when we couple that with uh, the retirement income that's going to be forthcoming to, to support that each month is important to evaluate. And, and where those assets are coming from, um, you know, and, and be able to really look at, you know, is there a shortfall here? How long will these assets last? And, and that's where the real expertise comes in, in terms of how I'm helping clients to really uh, eliminate or minimize that longevity risk. Um, it's so important, um, you know, also coupled with market risk and that spending risk. You know, if there's a shortfall, then we really need to look at and evaluate the products that, uh, you know, are holding their money um, and, and, and be able to make some reallocations, which can be quite simple. You know, there's a lot of um, products that are out there on the market that can meet everybody's risk tolerance or be able to, you know, mitigate those risks that, that we mentioned earlier. By the way, and S Sandy, and I know you face this all the time, or we both do. But isn't that a great term, longevity risk? In other words, you might outlive your money. Right? <laughs> this is this this is a longevity risk. You We're know, learning lots of new lingo today. Yes, aren't we? that's a great. But no, but that's really a great term. You know, because you know, once again, when you know, when you and I were, oh no, you're young. When I was growing up, you know, you figured. 65, 70, you're pretty much dead, you know? And, and now it's just, people just are living just, we have a good friend whose 100th, 100th birthday was two weeks ago, you know? And in the community where she lives here in Westboro, she was the sixth person who had her 100th birthday, you know, for live, and they're still alive. They're all still living there, you know? So Amazing. Try, trying to figure that out, just like a real, that's a real challenge. Could, could would you, Sandy? I'm sorry if I'm I'm talking. Am I talking? Go too for much? it. Right. You're good. Can you talk a little bit about long-term care insurance? Because I know you know for Sandy and I both find ourselves kind of on the other end of those conversations where we've got right. folks who have got either real nursing home concerns or I think more significantly from from my perspective as a lawyer, I always tell people I say you know it's kind of long-term care insurance. You think of that as being nursing home insurance. Right. But really, that kind of, I want to say that ship has sailed, but that's not the major issue anymore. Because if it's, if it's a nursing home, you can probably do some restructuring, qualify for mass health, do some other things. And the policy is never going to pay for your nursing home care. I mean, it just it too, need too big a policy. But it's the home care, you know, because who, cause, cause you buy these policies, but who wants to actually go to a nursing home? You'd rather shoot yourself, you know? But so the question is, is there, is there money though to keep you at home so that you don't have to think of that as an alternative? But can you just talk to, to long-term care insurance a little bit? Absolutely. It's actually one of my favorite things to sort of plan for, believe it or not. Um, having an extended care events can, uh, and, and not being prepared for it, you know, can, can really that's cause- a great, That's a great, an extended, extended care, care event. Events. Yeah, that's an extended good. care event. That's really good, okay. Yeah, it's it's an extended care event. And, you know, when you lose those two activities of daily living, you know, it it really 
uh, can, can compromise you and your ability to be independent and care for yourself. So, you know, oftentimes when we have clients that have an extended care event, it really um, uh, has, you know, the concern for, um, you know, a, a, a serious or irreversible consequence that, you know, someone can have in their portfolio and having to provide that care. And, and I certainly agree with you Ari, that the, the conversation around long-term care today is, is very, very different from a long-term care conversation, you know, even, you know, just five years ago, or even really like in the last year as it relates to COVID, you know, um, having such enormous outbreaks of COVID in nursing homes um, have, you know, brought people um, to my office concerned about that. Well, what if I get sick and I don't want to go to a nursing home? Um, oftentimes, um, the products that we have um, that I can work with, you know, provide that sort of uh, uh, home care benefit for you um, to be able to make sure that, you know, those needs can get taken care of. Um, there are so many different uh, products in the marketplace today uh, that really creates a lot more flexibility in terms of having these buckets of money allocated specifically uh, for, for long-term care. Um, so it's, 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 uh, really comes down to, you know, the questions of who's going to take care of you, how is this care going to be provided, you know, for how long can you withstand, um, you know, paying for this kind of care, um, and, you know, there's a lot of moving parts, uh, with that, but, um, I think, you know, quite quickly, one can agree that they'd like to have the plan in place. They don't want to have their children involved and you know, they don't want to disrupt any planning that's necessary for their spouse. So not looking at um, this can, can, that's where those irreversible consequences come into play. And can you speak to the issue of you know, people who just say no to themselves? I always tell people when you're thinking about long-term care, don't assume that you don't qualify. You know, let somebody else tell you that you don't qualify, you know, Absolutely. you just talk about in terms of, you know, what you, you know, eligibility, is it, you know, is it true that really, F, you know, 70 and above, you just can't even consider it? Is it, you know, if you can just talk about that a little bit. Absolutely. You know, because there are so many different products that are available on the market at this point, regardless of, you know, what age you're at, there's something for everybody out there. You know, traditionally, long term care standalone policies that are still available today have very specific underwriting requirements in order to qualify. However, with someone who has skill in this area, you can really um, curtail or reallocate assets to be able to make sure that you've got that bucket of money to be able uh, to, to fund any sort of care. And sometimes, you know, the bucket of money that you have might not be everything that you need, but it's important to carve that out because what it does, it buys time for you and it buys time for your family to be able to come together and make these decisions without having to have like fire sales on your real estate or selling off assets unnecessarily. You know, even if it's just a small bucket of money to be able to give you some breathing room, connect with the professionals that you need to, to really make the changes necessary to your plans. Sandy, I know that you deal with, with on, the other, on the other side of that with the long-term care providers and and uh, I'll, I'll I'll just say as as the one of the great long-term care insurance advocates I've ever seen <laughs> your your ability to get stuff out of these long-term care insurance policies is amazing right it's wonderful because you know with our long-term care policies that we have uh, when you know event happens and you need to trigger your benefit, uh, you have a, uh, a resource nurse that can help you coordinate all of this care. So you're, it's another benefit that you're, you're part of a team, that you're not having to do this alone, that you've got the guidance. And sometimes that in and of itself for the premium is, is worthwhile. Um, and, you know, speaking of premiums, you know, there's something for everybody out there. There really is. And it just depends on, you know, having the conversation and figuring out what's going to work best for you. 
not paying really, attention. Yeah, I'm sorry. I think Stephen. that's a really important point. I think that um, one of the things that when I when I talk to a new client and ask them if they have long-term care insurance, obviously we're really thrilled when they say yes. They don't know where it is and, and they don't know what it does, but they've been paying for it. So, um, <laughs> and, and we deal with on the horizon side, we deal with no less than 15 in different in long-term care insurance companies. And, and we have gotten pretty good at, at helping elders get those claims filed. Cause um, one of the things, you know, not to spend a lot of time on this cause it goes into great detail and, and, and our folks can call either Aaron or myself and we can help you with a little bit of the lingo, but, remembering those two activities of daily living that you have to have a deficit in, in order to open a claim. A lot of folks tell me that they've been thinking about it for a long time, but they haven't opened the claim because they don't have a deficit. But the reality is that deficit is based on the judgment of a medical professional, not you. So even though you say, well, I don't need help showering, I'm showering by myself, your nurse or your doctor might say, but it's not safe for you to do that. So therefore you do have that deficit. So, so making some assumptions as to whether or not you can open your policy, um, you should have a conversation with a professional about that. It, it keeps me awake at night thinking about the amount of our elders that are not taking a claim against those policies that are fully eligible that may not live long enough to bring the money out of it that's sitting there available to them. The other thing that I just want to touch on really quickly and is that one of the things I also suggest to my elder clients is, is that if you want to do your children an enormous favor, buy them a long-term care insurance policy and pay for it for them um, while you can, if you've got those kinds of assets. Because right now in 2021, if you need full-time live-in care at home, you're looking at about a hundred and a quarter a year. That's $125,000 a year. Now there's a lot in between beginning to need care and that. But if we just use that as a Geiger counter, you need to have long-term care insurance and it's that figure is not gonna go down, it's gonna go up. It is, you know, 60, I think it's 65% of people 70 and over end up suffering some sort of event. And, you know, these last anywhere between two and three years. So, you know, having uh, the conversation so that we can do a deeper dive together and, you know, also, um, you know, we can have a conversation liaise at where I can be the liaison between um, yourself and your children to, you know, help connect these dots. And, um, you know, I think that's, uh, that's essential. It's the communication. And that was one of the... Sorry, Arthur, that was one of the things that um, you and I spoke about in getting ready for today that I just wanna make okay. sure we save a moment to, to talk about before we finish. And that is that um, one of the things that you spoke about that I was so impressed with, and I, I really wanna dig around in this with you later, but um, certainly for our viewers today, sure. is, is your planning guide and, and actually knowing where your documents are. And, and making sure they're in the right hands and having a path. Um, and, and that goes back to our earlier conversation about where do I start? Um, can you just talk a little bit about what we spoke about around that, that planning guide or, or the, the three ring binder, if that's what it is with the separators about where's your will and where's your healthcare proxy and, um, and where are all the documents? And what number, where's the keys to the, to the, um, to the box at the bank? Um, Absolutely. So, a little bit about that. Sure. Um, the system that I like to use uh, is called the Life Folio uh, system, and it's essentially that it's uh, an, your entire portfolio of all the most important and valuable financial and legal documents that you need to have in one spot. Um, you know everything from uh, bank statements, credit cards online accounts and passwords, life insurance policies, burial plans, investment accounts. Um, I mean, we could go, I could go on and on and on. Um, and I, you know, unfortunately, you know, I've had um, two widowers come to me in the last year to say, I don't know where this information is, or gosh, you know, it was, uh, you know, by the time they got sick, it was too late to have this conversation. And, and, 
taking the time to be able to pull this together is so important. And I love being able to just break it down with my clients just step by step. It's overwhelming when you think about having to pull all of this together, write down where everything is, express your wishes um, that are important to you uh, in, in making sure that the legal documents are in place to support that is critical. Um, that way you can make sure that your family's not left with a mess. You know that your wishes are going to be able to come to fruition. And, and it makes the, the grieving process a little bit easier in terms of how to go about handling these kinds of things. You know, you find yourself able to grieve because you're not spending your time being so irritated with the person who just died because they left you such a mess, you know, it's like, give me sure. a break, Ma, you know. Sure. So, so as, as I mentioned at, early on, Aaron, my, one of my jobs is to be the timekeeper, and I'm really bummed out that we've run out of time. This has just been wonderful, just wonderful, Thank and you. I so appreciate Sandy's suggesting you, right? Um, and I'm ho I hope that you can, if you can get your contact information to our friends here at MCTV, right, or MB, excuse me, at MBTV, so that they can, you know, put put that up, you know, if they want to, they want to, you know, talk to you further about this. So this sure. has been great. This has just been great. And Sandy, thank you so much for doing this. You know, and I always pleasure. say, well, yeah, well Sa the nice thing about Sandy Cordovi, she just like knows everybody that you should know, you know, it's just great. And this yet again, yet again. So folks, this is really important stuff. This is really important stuff. You know, this is not about emergencies. This is about making sure that in the emergency, everything can get taken care of, you know, making sure you're not trying to build a fire station during the fire. You know, this is a, this, it's really, really important for everybody, for every person like Frank and Mary who wants to kind of live happily ever after on Martha's Vineyard. So thank you for watching. Thank you very much, Aaron. Thank you, Sandy. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here on Martha's Vineyard. Thank you very much. Thank you.